Hi, I'm making a video here. I'm going to try and keep it uh, as short as possible. Um, one of my friends on YouTube, uh, Shizulo, he's a, a Christian down in Liverpool and he has some interesting videos and I comment on them now and again. He had a video recently and it was called What Did Jesus Silence on the Subject of Homosexuality Mean? I made some comments under the video and I got into some discussion with a few individuals and some of it was nice, reasonable discussion, but some of it wasn't. So, uh, I wanted to make clear that I understand the Bible is very clear on the, the subject of homosexuality and I, I think Jesus wasn't as silent uh, on homosexuality as, as some people might like to believe or have been led to believe and I'm going to cover some verses explaining uh, why that's the case I'm going to start off by reading Luke 17 verses 28 and 29 likewise also as it was in the days of Lot they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold they planted, they built but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Now that was Jesus speaking. He was talking about the time of his second coming and he was speaking about the char characteristics of the time. And he said, it's going to be like Noah's day, there's lots of evil, and it's going to be like in Lot's day uh, in Sodom. And one of the, 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 one of the obvious sins of that time, um, if you go back to Genesis 19, was homosexuality. And so... We're going to go down to go down to Genesis 19, and we're going to have a read of the, the context there. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about were destroyed, okay, because of the, the, the fornication and the homosexuality. I'm going to read some verses from Genesis 19:5 to 8, and it's going to be looking at uh, the, the scenario where angels have come in the form of men to Lot's house. They're telling Lot to get out of uh, Sodom because it's about to be destroyed because of its sinfulness. And the men of Sodom have come and they've seen these angels and uh, they want to be more familiar with them. And I'm going to read now. And they, the men of Sodom, called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into, into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door and unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So, these men, the term there that we be that we may know them. You might say, well, where's the reference to homosexuality there? Well, know them um, must mean something more than just being acquainted with somebody, because otherwise, Lot wouldn't have said in verse seven, "Brethren, don't do so wickedly." There's nothing wicked about getting acquainted with somebody, but it's sexual sin. And then the verse after that clarifies the issue when Lot actually, in fear, offers his daughters who are virgins. He says, I have two daughters which have not known a man. And let me bring them to you and you can do what you want with them. Now that term again, they've not known a man. They must have known men. They must have been acquainted with men. They had brothers, they had their father, they lived in Sodom, where obviously these men live. So the term again is sexual. So people might say, well, no, I'm not convinced, but if we go to Matthew chapter 1, uh, the context is uh, discussing Joseph's relationship with Mary. Uh, Jesus is about to be born, and it says in verse 25 of chapter 1, uh, And Joseph knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, knew her not... At that time, when Jesus is about to be bo uh, born, did Joseph know Mary? Was he acquainted with her? Of course. They were betrothed, they were married, and they were about to have this child together. 
know her or knew her in this context is about sexual intercourse or sexual conduct. So that's why Sodom was destroyed. We get the word sodomy from Sodom. And so Jesus wasn't as sound as we think he was. And if you're uncertain about that situation in Sodom, there's another reference to it in Jude, in verses 6 and 7. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, <coughs> in Genesis 6, you'll read about the sons of God, which is a term for uh, angels, Raiha Elohim, the angels that came down, they're fallen angels that came down and they've taken women for wives and they've produced these strange hybrids called Nephilim and they wreak havoc in the, in the, in the land. And along with that, uh, Jude makes reference to Sodom and Gomorrah, saying that they went in the same sort of manner, they went after strange flesh. They got involved in fornication and they went after strange flesh. Now angels with women, women are considered strange flesh because angels are well, they're angelic beings and uh, humans, women are just humans. And strange flesh to men, well, as uh, we'll see in other verses, men lying with men and women lying with women is seen as strange and not normal. So that's why Jude makes reference to this, is Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed for these uh, acts going after strange flesh. So you might not be convinced still. So let's go on to Romans chapter 1. And Paul has been writing about how people like to serve the creatures, the created beings, rather than serve the creator. They don't acknowledge God. And there's different ways to not acknowledge God. We can just pretend that he doesn't exist. Or we can, we can perhaps deny his existence or deny him as the creator by not acknowledging his word and not abiding by his word. So this is obviously the case and Paul explains homosexuality is a symptom of people who refuse to acknowledge God properly. Um, and I'll read the verses, so it's Romans 1, 25-28. Uh, and he's saying, these people who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this, cause, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did, it, did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Pardon me. Now, there are Old Testament verses as well that make clear that homosexuality is a sin. And Leviticus 18 and 22, Leviticus 20 and 13, both describe men lying with men is an abomination. And in those days, if you were in Israel, if you were Israel, if you were part of the, the, the Jewish people and you committed that act of a man being sexual with another man, you were stoned to death. And that was God preserving his chosen people. Now, in the New Testament, we're not asked to stone homosexuals because the good news arrived that we can repent from sin, receive Christ as our Saviour, and we can be changed by the Holy Spirit who comes to live in us. And so we don't want to stone homosexuals, we don't want to treat them badly, we don't want to hate them, we don't want to be unfair towards them, but like anybody who comes into the church and they're involved in sin, we have to point out the sin and ask the sinner to repent from the sin so they can be right with God. 
Okay, now one of the most loving things you can do for a person as a Christian is to let people know when they're actually sinning. Now if you're in the world and you don't care about God and you've heard the gospel and you're not even interested, then fine, you, you go and live your life as you feel you should. Okay, this doesn't apply to you then. <coughs> but if you are a Christian, then we have to hold each other accountable to God's word. Um, if somebody came into the church and said, you know what, I think adultery should be tolerated now. I think adultery is not really a sin. <clears throat> it does say that, it does say in the Bible it's a sin, but that was written a long time ago. And I don't think it really is for our day. And you know, after all, God wants us to be happy and he's a God of love and he won't judge us. And uh, you know, having affairs occasionally it's actually saving my marriage, it makes it more tolerable. So why don't we just accept adultery and uh, see it no longer as a sin? Well, people in the church would say, sorry, it's written in the Bible that thou shalt not commit adultery. And there's verses all over the place saying we, we, we shouldn't do that. So I would expect that to happen. And if somebody came and says, you know what, I know it says in the Bible thou shalt not steal, but I don't think it's a sin anymore. I think we can steal. You know, after all, this is like 2,000 years later, or even more, since the commandments were written, and everybody has so much money and things and goods, and, you know, I want some. And uh, God wants me to be happy, and, you know, some, I have needs and desires, and some things I steal to satisfy them. I don't think God will judge me on that. Everybody's doing it, after all. I would expect people in the church to stand up and say, stop. We can't accept this because the Bible says thou shalt not steal and here are different verses relating to that. That's why we can't accept when somebody comes into the Christian church and says I want to be Christian but hey I'm a homosexual and I'm sure God's alright with that. We have to stand up and say no no as a Christian God does not accept homosexuality. Right? It's a sin like these other things like adultery, like fornication, like theft, like lying. They're all sins that we can't ignore. We can't, we can't just accept these things and say they're not sins. They're clearly outlined as sins. So that's the issue. Okay, It's not homophobia, it's not hatred, it's not uh, people being intolerant, it's the church contending for the faith. Now, if I come across a homosexual, and I have done in the past, I don't treat them badly. I'm, I'm not unfair towards them. I, I don't mistreat them or hate them on any of these things. Okay? But if we got into a discussion about faith, I would tell them that homosexuality is a sin, according to the Bible. And I think that you can be saved from that sin much the same way as I was saved from lots of sins in my life. You know, I, I used to be involved in adultery and fornication and uh, pornography and all manner of sins and evil. And even when I got saved, I still sometimes stumbled into these things. But slowly and surely, God has changed the desires of my heart and he's changed everything around and he's taken these things out of my life. And I know that's happened to certain Christians as well. Uh, who were who were homosexuals in their former lives? There are stories on the internet and in books of of homosexuals who repented and turned to Christ, and Christ took that sin out of their lives. And they're married, they have children, and they've found they find women attractive and men no longer. I I I I dare say occasionally some of these people have stumbled, but if they truly belong to Christ, they will change. So I would encourage homosexuals and anybody who thinks homosexuality is okay as a Christian, read your Bible and don't deny God's word. And I'll be praying for anybody who watches this video and anybody who comments and for people who are caught up in the sin of homosexuality in general. Christ can save you. Please turn to him. Thank you. Bye bye.